he does not look at your intelligence but what he looks he looks into the heart hallelujah because god is the one who searches the heart and that's why when you pray your prayer must come from the heart if you worship you must worship from your heart okay if you preach you must preach it from your heart why because god looks into the heart hallelujah and that's what today because here we see you know clearly because the prophet samuel was looking at david who was very young and he had no good appearance hallelujah but uh, here god is speaking to the prophet samuel and says i am not like another man who looks at i look into the heart hallelujah that means god does not look at your position your status who you are if you are greater you are great for yourself god does not god looks into your heart hallelujah how is your heart that is important hallelujah that's why i say by going to church does not say that you will make it to heaven what i say is having fellowship with god is important having intimacy with god hallelujah and that was not only on sunday but on daily basis hallelujah that's where you can see in the old testament uh, that these uh, prophets uh, they walked with god when they walked with god they saw the power of god operating in their life that whatever they spoke and whatever they said there was power behind that because they walked with god hallelujah so it's not necessary that if you say i'm going to church uh, that you will make it to heaven i will always say that clearly because how heaven church does not take you to heaven is your heart that you give to god hallelujah when you give your heart to god what will happen clearly god will use you in a mighty way the bible clearly says that sir king solomon god gave him a loyal heart but in the last what happened he forgot the loyalty you see that god has done for his life hallelujah and that's what many people my brother and sister in christ uh, that when god blesses them what happen they forget god they forget who he is hallelujah that's why i will always say never ever forget the blesser who has blessed you and brought you into a high position that's why when god uh, god blessed david and made him king david says a very powerful he says who am i lord and what is my house that you lifted it to me and brought me so high Amen. for i am nothing in your sight he says clearly hallelujah because he believed one thing that it was only god who lifted him up to that position hallelujah Amen. because god looked into the heart of david but where samuel was looking at the status and the physical appearance of his brothers and why he was looking because they were serving in the army of king saul and they were people of war but where david never went to war hallelujah but what david had more than what they did not have he had a connection with god Amen. hallelujah he had a connection with god my brother my sister in christ and that's what when you give your heart to god god will anoint you hallelujah and use you that's why whatever david did there was power hallelujah there was power even in his worship Amen. that's why whenever david came to the palace and he just played the harp what happened the bible says that the distressing spirit that was in king saul it left him hallelujah why because the lord was with him hallelujah and that's what today my brother and sister in christ that when you give your heart to jesus christ he will never break your heart hallelujah but sometimes what is the happen we give our heart to the person who we love so much hallelujah down the road what will happen if the relationship breaks off we become depressed and we are broken hearted hallelujah and then we think like oh what is the use of me living because the woman who i loved so much she broke my heart or the man who i loved so much broke my heart hallelujah even if you have a broken heart the bible says that jesus come to jesus hallelujah because the bible says uh, he heals the broken heart hallelujah in psalm 147 three says he heals the broken heart and he binds up the wound hallelujah so even if a broken your heart is broken you see what happened clearly if everyone has left you but jesus christ said that he will never leave you nor will he forsake you but even if your heart is broken if you are a shattered person that's not matter there is still hope because jesus still loves you hallelujah that's why he says i have loved you with an everlasting love he says the love that i have for you no one on this planet earth can love because the love that what is on this planet earth is a temporary love is a selfish love you see clearly is a emotional love but where the love of jesus is not emotional he does not go by feelings hallelujah that's why whenever he looked at the sick whenever he looked at those who were being diseased the bible says that 
His heart was moved with compassion. Hallelujah. That is the love of Jesus Christ, my brother and sister in Christ. And that's where today the Lord wants you to give your heart totally surrender to Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Surrender to Him, your heart. And He will change and He will change your life totally. Hallelujah. That's where He wants you to worship on the heart. Hallelujah. That's what when He looked at the Pharisee, Jesus, what He said? These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is very far from me. Hallelujah. In need, they follow the commandments of man. When he looked at the Pharisees, they were singing, but their heart was not connected. Hallelujah. Because when your heart is connected, you know what happened? It brings the anointing of God. In one of the, there was a, there was a program. Hallelujah. And they were invited, the many, in a church, it was actually in a church. And they invited like the, whoever wants to sing a song and they kept a prize. For the person that the first prize, like whoever sings the song that they give him. So there was a young man who came who had a very beautiful and melodious voice. Melodious voice he had. Very beautifully he sang. All the people in the church, they stood up and they gave him a standing oration. They gave him, they clapped, they applauded. They said, well done, very good, beautiful voice. We never heard his voice. Some say that his voice was sounding like an angel. After that, there was another woman who came who was very old, around 60 years she was. She also started to sing. Her voice was not as melodious as the first person who have sang. But when she started to sing, the presence of God came so powerfully onto the church that all the people fell flat on their fear, on their knees, started to cry and started to weep. And some of them gave their life to Christ. The difference between these two people, what I am trying to tell you today, the first person, he had talent, he had skill, he had a very good vocal. Hallelujah. But the second person, the old woman, she must have not had the best of vocals. But what she had, she had a relationship with the master. Hallelujah. So when she started to sing, what happened? The Lord himself came down. The Holy Spirit came and moved in such a way that it moved the heart of people. They started to repent under the power of God. Hallelujah. And they could see the power of God operating and they gave their life. The difference is this old lady, she had her intimacy with God. She walked with God every day. She had fellowship with God. You see clearly my brother. Why? Because Jesus never looked at the how beautiful voice you have. In this planet earth, there are many singers on this planet earth. They have very beautiful voice, very melodious voice. But the problem is, they do not know God. Amen. David also was one of the musicians during the time of Israel. There were many musicians. Many musicians were there. But the servant went in search for the son of Jesse. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, bring me a skilled person who can play the harp. Amen. Bring me a skilled musician that he may pray. And the servant came to King Saul. He says, we found one, not only David was the only single musician. There were many musicians during the time of Israel. There were not only one musician. There were many musicians like how there are many musicians today. But the testimony with the servant gave is, he said, we found a skilled player, the son of Jesse. His name is David. But the Lord is with him, he said. Amen. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ, today you need to examine yourself. Is the Lord there with you or not? Is the Lord there with you or not is very much important, my brother, my sister in Christ. That's what the Israelites, they wanted to fight against the Amalekites. And Moses said to them, do not go, for the Lord is not there with you. But they said, no, no, we will go, because this group who we are going to fight, they are very a few people, we will just kill them, destroy them and we will come back victorious. You know what happened? They were killed in the battle. And they started, some of them came back and they cried. And Moses said, did I not tell you? For the Lord is not a with you. My brother and sister in Christ is not who is with you is important. Uh, whether God is there with you is important. Amen. That's what I always believe. Not people. Today people will be, tomorrow people will go. But God will never leave you nor will he forsake you. People will come in your life. People will go. But God said that I will always be with you. Hallelujah. And he's the one who treats you as a friend closer than even your own brother. Hallelujah. That's why he said in the gospel of John chapter 15. On that day, I will not call you servants. I will call you yes. friend. Hallelujah. And that's what the Bible says. For no one has greater love that he lay down his life for his friends. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. And that's how much Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. That's where 
That's why you know when Jesus resurrected from the dead, he asked Peter one question. Three times he asked. You know what did he ask? Peter, how much do you love me? He said, you say, Lord, you know how much? Again he asked, Peter, how much do you love me? He said, Lord, you know me. And the third time, Peter was losing his temper and getting angry and irritated. He said, Lord, you know how much? He says, tend to my flock, he said clearly. Why Jesus had to ask Peter three times? Because it was the same th three times that Peter said to Jesus. He said, wherever you go, master, I will follow you even uh, until death. He said, the same words he said. And Jesus Christ said, before the cock can crow, you will deny me three times. So he wanted to uh, make sure that really Peter loved him or not. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. And here we see that three times Jesus asked Peter. And three times Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Attend to my flock. And that's what he did. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, when Jesus went away, he stood for Jesus as a pillar of the church till death. His love was so much great for the master. Church history says in the Fox Books of Martyrs, when they wanted to crucify him before the mad emperor Nero, he said, I'm not worthy to be hung the same way like my Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, you need to hang me in the river. That's why Peter was not hung on the cross like how Jesus was hung. He was hung the rivers. Hallelujah. Church history says, he says, I'm not worthy to be hung like my Lord who I love. And immediately with joy, they were killed and they were martyred. Hallelujah. Because the love was so much for the Lord. They say, they say, they say we saw with his eyes. We saw with his eyes. We saw him talking, walking with us. And how can I be silent? But other than preaching about this person. Hallelujah. My brother and sister in Christ. That's what the love the disciples had for God. And today the Lord is asking you. How much do you love him? Because he looks into your heart. He looks into your heart. He will never forsake you and he will never betray you. Mm -hmm. My brother and sister in Christ, mm -hmm. just like Judas. Judas betrayed Jesus Christ with a kiss. Mm -hmm. You see clearly, mm -hmm. he was chosen among Jesus' disciples 12. But he went and betrayed for the sake of money. And that's what today my brother and sister, many people, they betray Jesus. Because once they become rich, once they get money and everything, they forget Jesus. They betray him. Is equivalent like how Judas has betrayed Jesus, my brother and sister in Christ. Hallelujah. But here we see that Peter, when he denied Jesus Christ, he repented and he came back. But Judas did not come back, my brother and sister in Christ. The same thing happened with even King Solomon. When God spoke to him twice in a dream, he did not turn back and come to God. Like how his father repented and he came back. That's where he said, David is a man of my heart. He knew the heart of David. Amen. But whereas uh, the same blood is flowing into Solomon, his heart was entirely different. My brother and sister. Because God looks at every person in a different way. Hallelujah. Today you may be husband and wife. Today you may be brothers and sisters. But your heart may be not be the same. You see clearly? The same blood was flowing into Solomon. The father was loyal. But whereas Solomon was not loyal to his God. Because you know what happened? He fell in love with this world. He fell in love with all his beautiful wives. That he forgot who God is. Hallelujah. That's what happens my brother and sister. That when you become rich. You will fall in love with this world. And the things of this world. That's what Demas did. That's what uh, in the book of Timothy. Paul is telling Demas love the present world. And he departed from us. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister. With grief. With sorrow. He's telling to Timothy from prison, Paul, he loved this world and he left us and went away. That's how many people love this world and they leave Jesus, my brother and sister. But Jesus still waits for that person to come back like the prodigal son. The prodigal son, what happened? We all know the story of the prodigal son. When he came back to his sense, he says, let me go back to my father. That even the hired servant uh, eat the best of food than the food which I'm eating, which has been thrown for the swines. And he made up his mind. And the love of the father was so great that every day he used to come to the crossroad and see whether his son is coming or not. He never gave up. He never lost hope, my brother and sister. That's what we are like prodigal sons and daughters that when we go away far away, you see clearly, he does not give up on us. But sometimes when things do not work properly in our life, we give up upon God very easily. 
we start cursing god oh why i am praying to god why i am studying the bible why i am going to church what did god do we will turn very quickly we give up very quickly i am telling you in my in my spiritual walk or i also many times we are because we are human beings you see clearly but one thing you need to understand god never gave up that's what the prodigal son the father was waiting one day he will come one day he will come one day is come his hope never went in vain and one day he saw his son coming but the way he came the way he went he did not come the same way he was he could not be recognized but still the love of the father was so much in him that he kissed him he embraced him he put a ring on his finger he put a robe around him and he put sandals those are the signs of authority he says i do not take you as servant that's what the son when he fell before the father he says father forgive me for i have sinned against heaven and earth i am not worthy to be called uh, your son take me as one of your higher servant but he says no because the sonship will not go away hallelujah because of the blood hallelujah that's why the blood is always stronger than water hallelujah and the blood relation he says no my son no matter you have lost everything you came back hallelujah you have come back to me i will give you the same authority as a son hallelujah that's what my brother and sister in christ that god gives us back the same power and the same authority he does not look at us as a stranger he does not look at us as a servant though people may look at us they may look low upon you does not matter i will always tell you as a christian how you appear in the eyes of god is important how we appear in the eyes of god is important not how we appear before your friends or your family or your relatives or your brother and sister how you appear before god is important hallelujah my brother my sister in christ because god is the one day one day he will judge the living and the dead and that's what today the lord is saying for god looks into the heart not at a man looks at man looks at your position he looks at your wealth if you are rich person he will enjoy everything you lose everything he will not even phone you he will connect disconnect himself with you why he says it's useless to be with such type of person for such type of person i am telling you today god is looking for such type of people he will never leave you even you leave everything he will still be with you he will still be waiting at the door because the bible says in revelation 3:20 behold i stand at the door and knock who anyone who opens the door i will come and dine what is the door what is he knocking he is knocking at your heart amen hallelujah he is knocking at your heart in revelation 3:20 he says give me a place i will come into your life and when i come into your life i will change your life i will transform your life i will transform and do great thing that's what when you give your life to jesus what happens he will change your life he will change the situation he will transform you you will become a new creation that's what second corinthians 5:17 says for in christ jesus you are a being a new creation for all things have passed away my brother and sister in christ that's what today we all are here as a testimony god has brought us from darkness into his marvelous life and today we are blessed not only physically but we are blessed spiritually and we are blessed financially and we will lack nothing because this promise says the lion lacks seek hunger but those who seek the lord they shall lack nothing david said one thing before he can die in psalm 37 when he was very old in verse 25 he says for i am young but now i am old i never saw the righteous forsaken no is descendant begging bread hallelujah my brother and sister guys god will not allow you to beg on the streets hallelujah because he is your provider because he is mindful of his covenant because you are his son that's what he says do not call anyone on earth your father as you have only one father in heaven hallelujah and that's what very much important so when you give your heart to him he will change it he will transform your life and he will do great things sir in a life